woman's hobby turns obsessive. Look, aren't they beautiful? They're kind of weird. The masks definitely creep me out. I didn't like them at all. Bizarre things begin happening. The eyes were missing. The straw was sticking out of its belly and out of its eyes. There is a spirit inside waiting to come out. Voodoo kept coming up. Mom, it's the mask. And I thought, maybe there's something wrong with them. I was terrified. These masks, they're trying to kill me. <laughs> In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In November 2007, Bob Griffith brings home an important package for his wife. just happened? Hello? Oh, hey, babe. I was just almost in an accident. Shortly after he started driving, the gas pedal stuck on the car, and he could not slow down. So he had to jam on the emergency brake uh, to stop the vehicle. No, I'm, I'm OK. No, I'll be fine. Let me just see what's wrong with this. Yeah, I got it. I'll be home soon. But love you too. We had the car checked out, and there was nothing wrong with it. When we found out that the car was fine, we just brushed it off and forgot about it. You know, we just thought it was one of those things. In 2007, we moved into our dream home in Desert Hot Springs, just north of Palm Springs. And it was a very nice home. I lived there with my husband, Bob, and my 12-year-old son, Greer. Hello. Hey. Oh, there it is. I'm so excited. I wish you were as excited to see me as you are to get this box. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you OK? Uh, how's the car? I'm OK. The car's OK. okay. As long as you have this, we're all OK. I am just really excited. Do you want to see? Come on, I'll show you. My husband had a sense of humor. I've been waiting for this. And he was a good father. Mom, what did you buy now? <laughs> I will show you. Greer is smart. He's so intelligent. He is a great kid. I collect antiques. And as a housewarming gift for myself, I bought these two Haitian masks that I found on the internet. They were solid mahogany, and the craftsmanship was just amazing. One of them had the appearance of a gazelle. The other one had human features. Look, aren't they beautiful? They're kind of weird. When I saw the masks, I sort of got a very eerie feeling, almost paranoid. I remember when I told my mom that I didn't like them at all. And she insisted that they're going to look great on the wall. Oh, stop. I think they're amazing. Hey, 
Hey, buddy, what do you say? Let's go get some takeout. We use your mom's car. <laughs> All right, give me something good. We'll be back soon. I was very excited when the masks got there, and I hung them on their own special wall. Over the next few weeks, Jeanette and Greer settle into their home while Bob is away on business. My husband was an RV salesman. Because of his job, he would be gone for two weeks, maybe a month at a time for RV shows. And he would go and sell at these shows. So it was Greer and I alone in the house. Hey, bud. Hey. Brought you something to drink. Thanks. How's it going? Not too well. Why? I can't figure out this one question. OK, let's see here. This one? Yeah. Mm. OK, so you're just going to multiply, right? And then subtract. So it's going to be x minus 2. I still don't get it. Nah, you will. When's dad going to be home? I don't know, bud. Tomorrow, maybe? What was that? Whoa! What is it? Is that a bird? Oh, man. The bird that we saw was just a little black bird. You know, it, was, it wasn't uh, a raven. It was smaller. Poor guy. When we saw the dead bird, we thought it just hit the back door and, and died. Oh, um, let's let's go inside the house. It was a little weird, and it was sad, but birds fly into windows. We just dismissed it. You know, we cleaned it up and dismissed it. One night, I was in my room. I had just started falling asleep, and I heard tapping on my window. I definitely had a sense of paranoia, like somebody was watching me.
12-year-old Greer Griffith has been getting an eerie feeling in his new house. When I was walking down the hall, I heard the creaking and, and that same noise from outside. I looked behind me and, and saw nothing. After not seeing anything, I just... I wanted to brush it off, so I just sort of let go of it. Greer and I were playing in the backyard, and we came in, and we shut the door. <laughs> You're just getting too fast. I know. We can't keep up with you anymore. What's that? It's glass. And there was glass all over the dining room. What the heck? What broke the glass? Be careful. OK. It made a trail of 25 feet. It just made no sense at all. The trail of glass definitely seemed to be placed in this line. And then I noticed that the glass went through the dining room, into the living room, and around the corner. I just knew something wasn't right. Oh, God. What was it? I don't know. What? What is it? When I got down close to it, I noticed that there was something really wrong with this bird. It's freaky. Look at its eyes. It wasn't just the eyes were missing. It was that there was actual very large holes. It was stuffed with uh, straw coming out of it. It was very disturbing. The straw was sticking out of its belly. That actually was pretty frightening, because something like that would have to be put there somehow. That's just not normal. Is this your idea of some kind of sick joke? No, I, I would never do anything like this. What if someone's messing with us? Who would do something like that? Who would? One of the many thoughts I had uh, was that somebody was messing with us. Um, I, at the time, didn't have a clue who that could be. I don't know. It wasn't me. I'll go get a bag or something to put it in. I really didn't know what to think of the stuffed bird, other than it had to have been put here. But I couldn't figure out who would do that. It just didn't make any sense. I. Honestly, I didn't know what to think about it. But that was the first time that I started feeling uncomfortable in the house. Over the next few weeks, with Jeanette's husband on the road again for work, Jeanette and Greer make sure to keep the house under lock and key.
strange things are happening in Jeanette Osborne's dream home. I had 10 or 15 crickets coming up out of my shower drain. I, I was more than a little freaked out. I don't like bugs. I was terrified. you do this? No. Well, was it like this when you came through here? I don't think so. What in the world? It's food. I noticed that there was sort of like a trail of dry goods. That went out of the kitchen into the dining room and stopped at the wall, stopped right below the masks. Mom. Mom. It's the masks. The trail is leading to the masks. Oh, honey, it's just a coincidence. No, it's not. What else could it be? The path from the dry goods cabinet to the masks was about seven or eight feet. And even if it had just fallen directly out of the cupboard, there's no possible way that it could have made a trail. I told you they were creepy from the day you got them. You should get rid of them. They are not creepy. They're beautiful. I would try and explain to her, like, you do understand that all of this is probably because of those masks, right? And of course, she would try to brush it off. You're overreacting. Why won't you listen to me? They're beautiful. They're mine, and I love them. And they're going to stay right there on the wall. Over the next few weeks, Jeanette often finds herself admiring the masks. I know that they had a hold over me. I have other masks and, and other antiques. And of course, like any collector, I love them. You know, they, they make me happy. These were different. I wasn't willing to take them down. Jeanette's growing obsession takes a turn and she buys even more masks. Honey? Jeanette? Don't you think you're spending a little too much time on this hobby? Too much time? No, I like them. You don't know what you're talking about. Look, I've got to go. I love you. I'll be back soon. I had an unnatural attachment to these things. There was no explanation for it. My dad worked a lot, and during this time, he was actually leaving for weeks or maybe a month at a time. 
with that happening, he couldn't be sort of like uh, a helping hand on my part with persuading my mom to get rid of these masks. When my mom wouldn't believe me about the masks, it made me feel alone. Twelve-year-old Greer has just been attacked by an unseen entity. It felt like somebody had, had hit me. Mom! What? Mom! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Calm down, calm down. Uh, what? 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 Greer came uh. running into my room, and he said that something, that something was in his room. I was sleeping in my room, and something hit me in the forehead. Let me see this. He had fingerprints on his forehead, like this. It was frightening. Oh my god. Mom, it's a stupid mask. The mask, career, that's ridiculous. You aren't listening to me. Look, I will figure this out, OK? OK. Do you want to stay in here tonight? I definitely think it made things a lot more real for both my mother and I. Jeanette can no longer deny the connection between the haunting and the masks. I started trying to research the masks. I knew nothing about them other than they came to me in a box from Port-au-Prince in Haiti. Voodoo kept coming up. And I thought, I honestly don't know. Um, is it possible? Part of me was saying, well, maybe there's something wrong with them. Maybe they're causing this. Jeanette invites a voodoo priest into her home. So over here is um, where we found the trail of food, just lined up through the kitchen. I'm Bloody Mary. Voodoo queen of New Orleans and a voodoo historian. On many occasions, I'm called in as an occult expert when someone doesn't understand what's going on in their house. And here are the masks. The voodoo priest that Jeanette called came over the house to assess the situation. These two have a strong spare rod within them. They do? Many people consider voodoo to be the oldest religion that exists. It's a nature-based religion. So everything is about the spirit world. In fact, the word voodoo translates to mean spirit. Trans dance possession is a part of a voodoo ceremony. It would start with offerings to the spirits.
and eventually, to build energy, they're dancing. You're wanting to become the spirits. If you get possessed, you may go put on the clothing that is attractive to that particular spirit. You may put on a wig, you may put on a mask. These masks were used during ritual or ceremonies in my fate. The more and more those things are used, the more and more they're embedded with the spirit itself. What kind of rituals? It's hard to tell, but they are looking for their guide. What do you mean? The spirits, the mass, they are hungry. So what do we do? I mean, I don't want to get rid of them, but I want them to be at peace with my family. You need to feed them. Leave out gifts for them. In Jeanette's case, there were crickets and there were birds as well as food that were kind of brought to her. That was a hint that they needed to be fed. I can show you. Are we in danger? No. I'll give you all the tools you need. But first, let us perform a protection ceremony. The spirits need to understand who is in control. OK. After the protection ceremony, the house did feel better. And we started putting food offerings in a bowl under the masks. I, I didn't know if it would work or not, but I was willing to try anything. Jeanette Osborne is terrified for her life. It was a nightmare. But I knew what I was experiencing was very real. But in spite of her fear, her obsession with the masks defies logic. I didn't want to get rid of them. I, I was attached to them. But I kind of knew that it had something to do with them. It absolutely had to. That summer, Jeanette finds herself alone in the house. Greer leaves to visit his older brother in Kansas. You got everything. We are going to get this worked out, OK? Everything's going to be fine. I love you. I love you, too. Here's your stuff. OK, buddy. You ready to go? Yep. OK. Meet me in the car. All right. What's more, Jeanette's husband has no choice but to take a new job out of state. In 2008, 
Finances were bad for everyone. A lot of the RV stores closed in Southern California. And uh, my husband had to find, you know, work within his industry where he could. It'll just be a few months and I'll be back, okay? Love you. The lowest moment was definitely leaving my mom to deal with it on her own because my dad was still working. I got to the point where I knew I had to do something and I thought I need to reach out to somebody, I need to get some help. Desperate, Jeanette contacts a haunted object specialist. My name is John Zaffis. I've been a paranormal investigator for 43 years. Would you like to have a seat? Sure, that'd be fine. Thank Would you. you like some sugar or anything? Black is fine, thank you. Well, you've seen the masks. Mm -hmm. I've tried to get rid of them, but I, I want the activity to stop. But I don't want them destroyed. I just... Um, I just can't let them go. Well, I've been studying this, and there's definitely some negative energy with these masks. Jeanette didn't want to hear that. She didn't want to accept the fact that it could have been something on a negative level. Jeanette, can we remove them? No, I don't want to take them down. Can we at least cover them up then? I was still so attached to them, but he just felt, you know, that it had to be them and that if I wasn't going to take them down, I at least needed to cover them. So I did. A lot of times when these items are covered, it can help to calm down a lot of the energy. These two right here. Okay, well, these work? They work just fine. Just cover it up. Jeanette, if the activity continues, you're going to have to remove these masks. I understand. Can you show me the rest of the house? Jeanette and I walked through the entire house, and I was reciting several different prayers. This helps to break negative energy. I felt good about that. I was hopeful this is going to help. Things are going to get better. Over the next few weeks, while Jeanette doesn't experience any activity, she becomes further and further withdrawn. I was alone. It was maddening. And there wasn't anything I could do about it. I think it affected me psychologically. It's just like my nightmare. Oh my, oh my God. And I began hearing pops coming from under the floor, but they were a deep tone. In my mind, this was the foundation popping, and I was absolutely terrified. Jeanette is out of options. She must get rid of the masks. <laughs> The activity was building. It was chaos in the house, and I knew they had to go. John, he said I could send them to him because he could keep them safe, and he could study them, and he would keep them from destroying somebody else's lives or wreaking havoc in them. I took the masks, they were in the box, and I put them in the back seat of my car.
And I got pinned against the, the steering wheel. And my knees were all jammed up in front, and I was out in the intersection, stuck against the steering wheel. I was terrified. I absolutely thought these masks are going to get me killed in my car. They're trying to kill me. For more a haunting, visit TLC.com. Jeanette Osborne has been terrorized by what she believes to be masks possessed by evil spirits. <laughs> the activity was escalating. My dream house was absolutely becoming a nightmare. I was afraid to be in it. The masks had to go. I was stuck against the steering wheel out in the intersection. I really thought I could be killed. I was going to get hit. And I almost got hit by another car who was doing 40 miles an hour on the big cross street. I got out, had to go out my passenger door to get out. <gasps> the box was gone. It was just gone. No, 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 no. no. <gasps> I was surprised. I just couldn't believe it. Fearing for her safety, Jeanette refuses to go back in the house. That was our dream house. It was the nicest place we've ever lived, but we lost everything in that house. And it almost tore our family apart. When we moved, financially, it was a huge loss, but family, that, that's what was important. You know, to get our family back together. We were able to return to a normal life. The family eventually settles in Arizona. My husband passed away last year. And, you know, it's a horrible thing to, to lose your father, to lose your husband. But in a way, it's brought us closer. But things are getting better. I'm living with uh, my mom. We're just trying to do everything we can to keep each other afloat. We're definitely closer because of it. As for the masks. My son was right. You know, what he felt about these masks from day one, from the minute he saw them, he was right. The masks definitely creeped me out. I really just didn't want them in the house at all. I definitely think it was weird that they just went missing. As far as my beliefs, voodoo is one of those things that I always felt like you just shouldn't uh, mess with unless you're experienced in that sort of religious practice. I don't collect masks anymore. In fact, I'm very careful what I bring into my house at all. I absolutely think they're out there looking for another family, another person, and I think whoever comes across these things... Mom. Mom. ...is gonna feel that attraction to them, is gonna be drawn to them. Jeanette, she called me hysterical. And she was saying, John, the box is gone. They just totally disappeared. 
That told me right then and there, whatever was attached with these two particular masks was extremely powerful. And they did not want Jeanette shipping them off to me. It does bother me. Am I concerned that they might show up in another thrift store or they might show up in a tag sale someplace and wreak havoc for somebody else? Absolutely. What's even more interesting is where are they now? And who will be calling next? senses spirits in her house. It just felt like someone was playing hide and seek. But these ghosts have a tragic past. Something happened here. Something terrible. Can paranormal experts put them to rest? I felt it was definitely a male spirit. What happened? <laughs> the energy. It's too much for her. Before it's too late. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are open. Nightmares become reality. In the southern part of Virginia lies a charming town known for its rich heritage. As a young man, David Beeson bought property in the rural area surrounding Smithfield. It was a piece of farmland, and being 23 years old, I, I was able to purchase the lot because uh, the payments on it were cheap. For generations, farming families have labored the land that is now the site of David's home. I actually built the house in 1986, and that's where I got married and been raising my family. David and his wife, Sandy, have been together since their 20s. You would think after all these years, I'd be used to doing the yard work around here. <laughs> well, that's what you get from marrying a country boy like me. <laughs> and I wouldn't change it for the world. Stephen. Hey there, Mr. and Mrs. Beeson. Great to see you. Nice truck. Thanks. I've actually been waiting to drive it forever now, and it's uh, official. Huh. Stephen, you got your license. Yeah. You finally did it. The couple has a 16-year-old daughter named Marky. She's a normal, typical girl, especially at that age. Marky and Stephen have grown up together. Good job. Thank you. I'd known him for about seven years, and we're really good friends. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. OK, OK. Steven, uh, you be careful with my little girl, OK? Yeah. yeah. She's the only one I got. Dad. What's your thing, Mr. B? Dad. Marky was very social. Marky always liked to have a friend with her, whether it was a schoolmate or somebody in the neighborhood. They would go off by themselves and stuff like that. So I had a pizza joke, but I'm not going to tell it because it was really cheesy. <laughs> you just think since you got a license that you're all like fancy and stuff now. I don't know what you are talking about. Are you cold? Uh, yeah, it's kind of chilly. I'm just going to go get my jacket from the car.
I saw an older man with a hat. I don't know how to describe. I could just sense he was my friend's father. But Marky has never met Stephen's dad, who passed away several years ago. What are you looking at? Hey, are you okay? Uh, yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay. Are you sure? Maybe we should, uh, maybe we should get out of here. Did I do something to piss you off? Because, you know, things feel kind of weird for some reason. No, no, it's not you. This was your dad's truck, right? Before he passed away? Yeah, why? Did he ever wear a hat that had, like, I don't know, a a horse's head on it. How did you know that? Because I think he's here. Uh, maybe to make sure you're okay? Okay. <laughs> How do you know any of this? You're like, you're like the kid who sees dead people? Something like that, I guess. As long as I can remember, I've had this ability. I never really talked to anybody about it. I didn't really try to understand it. Oh. What's it like? Well, when I was little, I used to feel my grandmother a lot. And that was nice. But now it's different. It's like a lot of other spirits. Wow. Do they ever, like, scare you? Sometimes. It's hard to explain. It's like, I don't know what I'm feeling. Probably think I'm some sort of freak now. No, not really. See, I think about my dad all the time, and I, I really miss him, so it's kind of nice, you know, to know that he's still here with me. It was comforting because, you know, he believed me, and he didn't think I was crazy. Thanks. But these other spirits fill Marky with a sense of dread as if something horrific happened long ago. I heard the actual 
voice of something was coming from the closet. Best way I could describe it is just it just feels like the hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. It was a male voice, and that scared me to death. Lately, 16-year-old Marky Beeson has been sensing spirits in her house. I saw like a dark shadow in the shape of a person. There was just someone in the room. Marky stopped wanting to be in her room in her late teenage years. She would stay out in the living room on the couch. She just felt more comfortable rather than being in her, in her room. How many times do we have to go over this? Mom and I don't want you sleeping out here. That's what the bed in your room is for. But Dad. Ghosts, they're back. One of them was in my room last night. Ever since she was a child, Marky has told her parents about these ghostly encounters. She was between five and six years old, and she came to me and said that she had ghosts in her room. She could sense things like somebody was with her, somebody was watching her. As she got older, it just seemed like things would get worse with her. But they've always dismissed her fear as a figment of her imagination. Honey, you're a little too old to be scared of monsters in your closet. We thought it was just a phase. We thought maybe it was an attention getter, something like that. So what is all this about? Did you have a fight with one of your friends? He would just tell me that nothing was there. You know, it's all in your head, pretty much. What'd I say? Marky is unnerved by the idea of being in the house alone. I always had friends come over my house. And it just was more comforting knowing that there was someone there with me. And I didn't want to be by myself.
could sense it was a younger spirit. <laughs> The teddy bear is nowhere to be found. It is gone. And it had just disappeared. Ever since Marky was a young child, she sensed spirits all around her. You like the kid who sees dead people? Something like that, I guess. I did feel like there was multiple spirits in my house. Lately, the activity has increased. I heard laughing. That's when I could sense it was a younger spirit. It just felt like someone was playing hide and seek. Marky has the feeling that ghosts are not at rest, as if something horrific happened long ago. It is very stressful, because things are getting more intense. I don't know what's going on. I don't know 100% what it is. Is everything okay? Mom! It's you. Who did you think it was? The ghosts. They're back. But, but this time it's different. It's like everything I feel is just getting stronger. I know you don't want to hear it, but something happened here, and I don't know what, but something terrible. I'm scared. Oh, honey. Marky's parents don't believe in ghosts. Her mother is at a loss for what to say. You didn't eat the dinner that I left for you. I'll just go heat something up for both of us. Oh. 
ein. We would listen to her, but you know, I, I just couldn't grasp what she was going through. Marky's demeanor changed. She was scared. She wasn't comfortable. She didn't know what it was or what was going on. Things were happening that she wasn't sure of. It seemed like it got worse as she got older. I stopped telling them really because my parents thought, you know, I was just being dramatic or I was just seeing things. I can't talk to my parents. It's like they don't even care. Don't say that. It's more like they don't get it. I guess. I was very frustrated because I wanted them to believe me, you know what I mean? I wish they could experience what I was experiencing. It made me feel very isolated. OK. So what happened last night? He would ask me questions, you know, if I could talk to ghosts in my house and all that kind of stuff. He was real intrigued by it. There was this ghost. And all I know is something horrible happened. As the days go by, Marky does everything she can to escape these spirits, but they appear to follow her wherever she goes. Restless spirits have been visiting 16-year-old Marky Beeson, and one appears to be a man. It was just an intense presence. I felt like someone had ran their fingers through my hair. And then I heard a male voice. Shh, and it's gonna be okay. The fact that I can't see this thing and it can physically touch me scared me to death. That summer, David's cousins from England come for a visit. But he neglects to mention what Marky has been going through. Here we are. You'll be staying in Marky's room. It's lovely. Are you sure it's all right? I had cousins that took off work for the whole summer, and they just kind of wanted to see, you know, the United States. And we told them they could stay with us. It's only for a few days, and uh, she'll be fine. I had never met my dad's cousins before. So make yourselves comfortable. Maki. My bedroom was the only one in the house that had a queen-size bed, and they needed it. It's all right, I'd like to freshen up a bit. It's been a long trip. Certainly. Fresh towels in the bathroom. Kenneth, how about a drink?
hope you're okay. <laughs> so remember the big dog that Aunt Jenny had? What was the dog's name? Buford. Buford. Do you know? Do you know that Buford was so big and I was so small, I used to ride Buford like he was a horse. No, no you did. I did. We have pictures. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to be a pain, but can you guys keep it down? I'm trying to sleep. Oh, jeez, honey. We're sorry. Yeah, we'll be quiet. Okay. <laughs> Maki's a good kid. Yeah. I just wish we really knew what was going on with her these days. She seems stressed. Is everything all right? To be honest, we don't know. Margie's a teenager. It's hard to know what's going on with her. That's for sure. She is telling the truth, you know. There are spirits here. She can sense their energy. One particular evening that I do remember well, my cousin actually said she could feel the energy that Marky was feeling. What? How do you know? David, come off it. Grandmother, my mother, your mother. We all have the gift. But you know that. All the women in my family, at least on my mother's side, seem to have that intuition. So Mark has it too. Some of that is probably in the bloodline to where she could sense things or is too sensitive. Now do you understand? Spirits lurk in the Beeson home, and they are not at rest. When David's cousin comes for a visit, she too senses the dark energy that haunts his daughter, Marky. She saw it, a darkened silhouette, and then all of a sudden he was gone. The next day, Julia seeks out Marky to discuss the haunting. You look like you've got a lot on your mind. You could say that. I want you to know that I understand what you're going through. It turns out the women in their family have a gift. For as long as I can remember, I've had this ability just like you. My mother, her mother, all of the women in our family. Really? 
why didn't Dad tell me? I just don't think he ever took it seriously. But maybe now he will. It was kind of cool knowing it was a family thing, that uh, I wasn't the only one. Like, she knew what I had been experiencing throughout my whole life. It made me feel very comforted, and I didn't feel like I was crazy. Now that his cousin has confirmed sensing spirits in the house, David can no longer deny his daughter also has the gift. It definitely opened my eyes up. Something is happening. Knowing that I doubted what Marky was telling me was true, it makes you feel bad, you know, that you actually doubted your child. In order for his daughter to feel at peace with the spirits, David invites Seven Cities Paranormal to investigate the home. Hi, I'm Scott. I lead these investigations. And this is Sherry Hi. and Sarah. Hi. Our main purpose is to help people, help those that have questions or don't understand what's happening to them when it comes to paranormal activity. And what do you do? They bring an insight into the case that might otherwise be a no. In other words, we're psychics. Sherry is known as a clairsentient. She has the psychic ability to retrieve information from her surroundings. I have a knowing sense of things that have occurred in the houses that we go in. It's nothing to be afraid of. Sherry is our lead medium, and uh, she's definitely been my mentor. My role in the group is mostly to um, assist Sherry to give more knowledge. She has the gift, too. Yes. I sense it's only getting stronger. Stronger? But why? Marky just did not understand her abilities at all, or, you know, the reason why she was getting all this information. And it is very scary to feel spirit in your house and not know who they are or why they're there. Your abilities tend to intensify when you become more aware of your surroundings. When that awareness occurs, it's almost as though you become a beacon of light of sorts to the spirits. The more you interact with a spirit and the more you acknowledge it, the more it will interact with you. About time for us to get started. Why don't you head upstairs? Typically, they don't give us any information before we go in. We go in blind just because, you know, it makes us more credible. So me and Sherry, when we first go into an investigation, we'll do a walkthrough and we'll start feeling things and then we'll kind of go off each other's feelings. energy here, it's powerful. There's a spot in the hallway where you can really feel the energy flowing. Um, it's very strong. Yeah, I feel it too. I'm going to check out Marky's bedroom. Suddenly, Sherry has a vision of an event that took place where the house stood long ago. Sarah can sense it too. I felt definitely a male spirit. This specific spirit wanted me to know that he was present.
For more a haunting, visit TLC.com. I'm going to check out Marky's bedroom. While two psychics investigate the haunting of the Beeson home, Sherry has a vision of a past event that took place on the property. I could feel the little girl's energy, and I could hear her giggling and laughing. And you know that sense you get when you're running and your hair's blowing in the wind? I could feel that. And then her fear. That was extremely strong. Her colleague Sarah also senses a presence. I remember just feeling kind of trapped very vulnerable, like something had control over me and was overtaking me. What happened? The energy, it's too much for her. We gotta get her some air. Thank you. You're welcome. What happened back there? I sensed a male entity. And then all of a sudden, I felt desperation, sadness, fear, and guilt. That's what I've been feeling. Who is this ghost? I wasn't 100% sure at the time that it was a spirit. I thought it was something darker. Did you pick up anything? Yes, I did. I had a vision when I was in the hallway. The father and the little girl were the main two spirits that were in the house. The father had been out in the field plowing the little girl came running out to the field, and she was giggling and laughing. <laughs> the horse was a little antsy that day. girl was run over. So the issue is now the little girl is terrified to cross over. And until then, the father's spirit will not rest. Not until they're back together. He felt guilty because he felt that it was his fault that his daughter died. Her father had crossed over, but he kept coming back to try to get her to go back with him. So, uh, what do we do now? I think I can help. I think I can guide her to the light. In order to cross over the little girl, Sherry must first alleviate her fears. She was afraid of that brilliant white light. 
for a lot of people who don't cross. It's the fear of the light. If, if they never knew anything about the light, that's very scary. Getting a spirit to cross is helping them to understand, helping them to realize what's on the other side. I was focusing on the little girl telling her that her father was waiting for her. Don't be afraid. He's waiting for you. After Sherry crossed her over, it felt like everything was at ease, everything was calm, like all the energy had gone away that was going on in my house. Today, Marky has come to terms with her gift. It's still going on. I'm not necessarily scared of it anymore. I've learned how to deal with it. My advice to a parent with a child going through the same thing is listen to your child and get them some help early. I'm glad that I took the initiative and was lucky enough to run into Scott and his group. As for the spirits of the girl and her father, Marky is hopeful that they are at peace. Sherry had told me that the teddy bear had been taken. It was comforting knowing that the little girl had it. I felt if she wanted something of mine, she could have it.